Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Robin Thompson. Thank you. Yeah, I like this. Yes. How are you doing, my friend? Well, I just got off a plane from Florida. Well, we're glad I'm to... I'm doing good. Glad the, uh, glad the cabbie uh, knew how to find the house here. Me too. He didn't park around the side of the house. He parked in the front, right? Good. I think so. Yeah, you sink around the side. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's good to have Robin Thompson here with uh, some of his musical cohorts here visiting with us for Studio Showcase here at home in the Chickahominy Swamp. Uh, Velpo, Robertson, Audie Stanley, Carlos Chafin, welcome. Welcome to, the, welcome to the house. Glad yeah, I'm glad you're here too, man. This uh, gentleman right here, I, I met some years back. Uh, he doesn't know the first time that I uh, was ex uh, exposed to Robin Thompson's music was uh, on a parking deck where they were playing on the, a steel mill. A band named Steel Mill was playing on the roof, and they used to have concerts on a parking deck in Richmond, Virginia, and they stopped having them because the parking deck was swaying. And, well, people uh, wanted to fly. People off wanted the to top. fly at that particular time. Yes, they <clears> did, <throat> didn't they, Robin? Robin uh, it has, has done a lot of things with the musical uh, genre here. Uh, he's, uh, I guess, I'd. What would you call the type of music that you play, Robin? You're a. You're you, a you would have to ask me that. Yeah, though. right. It's kind of a country rock thing, I guess. You uh, would you would you say that uh, winning the American Song Festival back in uh, what was it, 72? 1975. 75. Was that that's really the kickoff to... Well, that had a lot to do with it. That was right before my first album, and it, I guess it enabled me to, to uh, get that first record deal. So I, so I guess entering those song contests can actually be real beneficial to, to well, obtain it. Well, they give you money. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you reckon, win. You reckon we can get uh, you and the guys to stretch some <clears throat> strings and some, uh, some accordion over there on the, the one that won that one for sure, you? Sure, we're going to do that. This is a song... Uh, called Boy from Boston. All right. He was born in Boston and Lord, he never tell you that He went out west so the suit and vest for a guitar and a cow Barroom about women that had done him wrong. Man, that boy from Boston sang a country song. See, his daddy was a lawyer, a part time diplomat. Sent him off to college, but Lord, he didn't last for much of that. He just listened to the records on his stereo, sing and play along. Man, that boy from Boston sang a country song. When he sang, it's where he lived a life of toil and pain. Sing us every frame. Everyone would cry. And if he could be here now, he'd want you to sing along. The man that boy from Boston. Sing a country song. That scene in Oklahoma Laying in some back street dive 
say he'd been drinking pretty heavy He was looking like a man that was barely alive But if anybody would listen He'd sing all night long The man that bought from Boston Sang a country song When he sang, he swear he lived a life of toil and pain. He sang a sad refrain. Everyone would cry. And if he could be here now, he wants you to sing along. Man, that boy from Boston. Sing a country song Man, that boy from Boston Sure sing a country song It's a real pleasure to, to have you guys visiting with us here, Robin. No. And, and deep in the Chickahominy Swamp. It is deep in here. We, yes, it is. Very much so. <laughs> We will, uh, uh, we will take care of you later on with some, some, uh, some victuals. I know you will. Yes, I've been of course. On, I've been you, in this thing before. been in this swamp before. <laughs> the, uh, the first album you did, the first couple of albums you, uh, that you recorded were out on major labels, weren't they? Yeah, they were. Did now, the last uh, few things uh, um, were basically, I guess you'd say, self-produced. You put them out uh, um, yourself as far as uh, manufacturing the thing and mixing it and putting it all in. Sorry, what differences, if any, would you say that uh, the impact of having that major label deal as opposed to doing it yourself? Would well, you? that was why we are no longer on a major label. We couldn't really see a difference between the major label. <laughs> okay. and, uh, it, a lot of them were co-produced by Carlos Chapin too, right. also. And, uh, but uh, I never had any really great luck with major labels. They were up there in New York, you know, up there where the people aren't so friendly and they weren't down this way and really didn't know what I was doing uh, in my own area. Um, so we said goodbye and we came back home and started doing our own records. Well, it makes it uh, uh, a little more control over, you get over a lot what, more you, control. what you've got. Yeah. You don't sell as many records, but you make a little more money off of each record, so it kind of makes up for itself. And also, I guess from a songwriting point of view, uh, it's uh, when you're uh, pitching your songs to other people, also, it, it's easy to... You've got something to put in their hand that really sounds, sounds like something, you know, well, as opposed to pitching them a little demo that you... From a, apart. from a songwriting point of view, it's a lot different because you have, have total control. I always found that, that uh, when I was on a label that there was somebody that I had to get my songs approved Right. Bye. Right. And uh, they were always about 20 years old. And now, if you mess up, all, the only person I, you have to fire is yourself, right? Right. And you hire yourself right back again. Yeah, long, Nobody works this cheap. Long-standing right? job here. I tell well, you. Have you got another original one in your in your pocket you could do for us here at home? Yeah, we're gonna do a song that was on uh, the Since Grade School album. It was, the Since Grade School album was a a uh, an anthology, so to speak, except for four songs, and this was one of them. It's a uh, New ones that weren't on previous right. records and stuff. And uh, it was co-written by a, a man named Tony Hazelin, who was in uh, a group called Louisiana LaRue yeah. a while back, if you remember those yeah. guys. Oh, yeah. And it's, uh, I started writing this song uh, when I was doing a concert in Norfolk one day and uh, on the back of a, a pier and was looking out over the, the shipyards. And uh, this came, came out and uh, finished it in Nashville with Tony. It's we'll called These Two Hands. We'll look forward to hearing it. All right.
fell in love when I was 17 to my high school home coming queen she's still the best looking woman that I've ever seen got a job right out of school working for a living in blue jean blue I won't get rich but I'll get back just as long as I can use these two hands Proud to be cutting out a living with these two hands Reaching for a better day I understand Got to do my best Cause I know my future rests in these two hands It ain't easy for a man like me to Pay the bills in the land of the free Work my fingers to the bone Just to make ends meet Thank the Lord for the long weekends Need a break every now and then Monday morning when the whistle blows Then I'll be back on the job again Using these two hands Proud to be cutting out a living with these two For a better day, I understand. Got to do my best because I know my future rests in these two hands. Working in the summer sun, I'm breathing in the winter wind. This job. Is Gotta get done, cause my family they depend on the money coming in from these two hands. Proud to be good and out of living with these two hands. Reaching for a better day. Bound to do my best Cause I know my future rests In these two hands Proud to be cutting out a living With these two hands Reaching for a better day Understand, I got to do my best because I know my future rests in these two hands. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, Robin, you've got a um, you've got a project that you've been working on uh, here recently with a couple of other notable Virginia songwriters. Also, um, could you tell us a little, a little bit about the what's the title of this again? Well, actually, it's uh, two guys, Mike Lilly right. and Lewis McGee and myself. We've been working for a little while. Actually, we've been working on it for over a year now. Yeah. Because everybody's working so much. 
Uh, three different towns, too, eh? <clears throat> right. And we've decided to call the, this album uh, The Famous Unknowns. And it's because that's basically for what we are, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, but, well, let me tell you about the project. All three of us have uh, contributed four songs to the project, so it's 12 songs on the, on the CD and the cassette that will be out. And um, we all helped each other finish. Came and did harmonies songs. and stuff and just kind of yeah. mixed it up together. Mm -hmm. You uh, feel like doing one of them off of a... Uh, of, of the famous unknowns for us, uh, well, uh, a Robin Thompson song for us here. Sure, Steve. Stevie was one of those, and this is one that uh, that I wrote. Also, it's uh, kind of a song that uh, is written about my mom and my wife. Well, that's but, inspirational for a song. So if there to, ever was one, didn't yeah, you? yeah, man. It's Robin Thompson. I just don't know what I'd do If it wasn't for you And you are my guiding light Your smile, it sees me through You are my saving grace And I know I'd never make it Without a little help from you And without your love behind me I don't know what I'd do If it wasn't for you
For WCVE-FM, our audio engineer was Paul Roberts with assistance from Mark Helfer. Our executive producers were Helene Funk and Bill Miller. Special thanks to the shops at Antique Village, Maplewood Farm Antiques, Hungry Hound Antiques, Whiting's Old Paper, and Penguin Antiques, Gene and Dorothy Hudson, Carabatis Inc., and Kevin McGranahan. Also thanks to the Texas-Wisconsin Border Cafe, Moon Dance, Sam Miller's, and Brown Distributing. Our producer-director was Teresa Hudson. For Studio Showcase, I'm Paige Wilson. Thanks for joining us, and I hope we'll see you again soon. Production funding for Studio Showcase, Paige Wilson, and the Out of the Blue Review is made possible in part by Plan 9 Records. Located in Carytown in Richmond, Main Street in Charlottesville, and Albemarle Square in Charlottesville. From folk and country to jazz and classical, Plan 9 specializes in hard-to-find music that you can listen to.